This is music, and this is one album per decade. Kind of. <laughs> This is a response video of sorts. It's a response to the ongoing one album per decade thread here in the vinyl community. I actually don't know who started it, but uh, there are two versions of it. Uh, one has as its premise, if you could only own one album per decade, which album would that be? And the other version has as its premise, what is your favorite album per decade? Uh, both versions go back to the 60s. Another part of this uh, thread is that you have to challenge other members of the vinyl community to take part in the fun. And I was challenged twice by Garage Geek and by No Solution. Check out both of these channels, especially if you're into, uh, you know, the whole VC thing. They're awesome uh, channels here on YouTube. Uh, Garage Geek went all the way back to the beginning of the 1900s. Um, however, since I'm an 80s kid, I grew up listening to 60s and 70s rock so uh, that my parents liked. So my world of music starts at the 60s. I know there's important stuff going on before that, but I'm going to stick to the original format and go back to the 60s. However, uh, I was challenged twice. That means I have two challenges. I think that justifies that I pick one album per decade per challenge. That's two albums per decade. Is that cheating? Maybe. But I was challenged by Garage Geek. He breaks all the rules all the time. And by No Solution, who cheated in his own one album per decade video. So I'm going to go with two albums per decade. 60s first. I'm going to go with... Uh, the Beatles and Revolver and also by the Beatles Robber Soul. Now, this is the one artist I would listen to the most when I was a kid. My brother and I, we grew up listening to the Beatles because uh, our dad is a Beatles fan. He had, you know, cassette tapes and records and we would listen to them on our own cassette decks and record players in our own rooms. My favorite album by the Beatles is actually no surprise there, probably um, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. But I picked these two because this is where the Beatles get really interesting musically. Don't get me wrong, I love their earlier stuff, their happier stuff for the most part. But I think this is where they start taking psychedelic drugs and you can hear that in the music. So the songs are really interesting on those two albums. Okay, moving on to the 70s, Rainbow Rising. My favorite album by Rainbow is Long Live Rock and Roll, but this one has Stargazer on it. All the songs on here are great, to be honest. Cover artwork is fantastic. Ronnie James Dio sounds great. Um, there's nothing bad about this album, and to me it's a milestone in hard rock and heavy metal music. The other 70s album is also a milestone. Judas Priest, uh, Sad Wings of Destiny, fantastic artwork as well. And this is where, in my opinion, their style starts taking uh, shape. You have The Ripper on here, which is an iconic metal song. All the songs are great. You've got Dreamer, Deceiver, those songs as well. Just, just a fantastic album and another milestone in heavy music. Moving on to the 80s, up first, Running Wild, Under Jolly Roger, another piece of awesome cover artwork. This is a very important album to me. This is my favorite Running Wild album. It has the title track on it, which I love. It's a great song. Check it out. Uh, but all the songs on here are great. It's German, traditional heavy metal with touches of power metal. And uh, it's just a joy listening to this from beginning to end. But do check out the title track. It's Pirate Metal. The other uh, 80s album is also a German one. It's Halloween's Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 2. A milestone again, but this time in Power Metal. And again, fantastic cover artwork. This uh, has the title track, which is 
just an epic song. You have the opening track, which is also fantastic. You got I Want Out, a very melodic song. You have some fun songs too, uh, Rise and Fall and Dr. Stein or Dr. Steen. Um, Mikhail Kiske sounds fantastic. The songs are well composed. The production, I think, is great. It's another fantastic album. Moving on to the 90s, the self-titled uh, debut by Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Uh, clean cut, uh, slickly produced, melodic hard rock from the 90s uh, with a slight progressive edge. The songs have a nice dynamic to them. Um, very, very unique and instantly recognizable vocalist. Uh, and the drumming is actually worth paying attention to in this album. So, uh, yeah, a nice hard rock album from the 90s. The other 90s album is this one here, Symbolic by Death, a progressive death metal masterpiece. There's none here uh, on this list of songs. There's not one single song that I get tired of listening to. I love them all. They're fantastic. A great team of musicians on here. Um, the production is slick too, but it fits the music very well. Just a, a masterpiece in my opinion too. Moving on to the 2000s. Starting out with this one here, Celtic Frost's uh, Monotheist. Uh, this is their comeback slash swan song album i think uh celtic frost their music has always been dark even cold lake has it's kind of creepy i think so it's dark in its own way um some of it is traditional metal like cold lake to me it's not glam uh, to be honest some of it is mid-tempo thrash like vanity nemesis some of it is avant-garde into the pandemonium and also to make Ethereum and morbid tales emperor's return and all of that stuff that's more like primitive almost like proto black thrash or something on here this is to my ears it's doom metal and it's really dark um and all the songs are fantastic it's oppressive but still uh, very interesting uh, Tom Warrior's uh, voice. I think this is the best he's ever sounded in uh, in Celtic Frost. And uh, this is also kind of a blueprint for uh, Trypticon, his subsequent project. Uh, but I think this is a great doom metal album. And it's kind of a one in a million because it's a comeback, but also the swan song. So great stuff. Uh, the other 2000s album is this one here by Bolt Thrower, Those Ones Loyal. Uh, I love this album because it's groovy death metal. Uh, and my favorite Bolt Thrower song is on here, The Kill Chain. And um, this is a great soundtrack for a road trip. I love listening to this album while I bicycle to and from work. Uh, fantastic groovy death metal. Uh, so there you go. Moving on to the 2010s, uh, starting out with New Beginning by Bandmate. This might offend a lot of Bandmate fans because the first couple of releases by Bandmate are held in not as high esteem as their subsequent ones because they were not allowed by their management to use their own material on the first uh, couple of releases. And this is one of those releases. My favorite album by Bandmate, that's Unseen World. Um, but I have a soft spot for this one because Thrill is on it. That was the first song I heard by them. It's a fun, groovy, hard rock song. And although they didn't write their own material on here, the songs are good. Thrill is good. Uh, Arcadia Girl is good. You have um, The Price of Pride is a very good song. Um, so I think this is a good hard rock album. So that's why I picked it. Same story with the next one here, ACDC Rock or Bust. Not a lot of people talk about this one, and when they do, they trash talk it. I think it's a pretty good hard rock album. It sounds like ACDC. Uh, I think, as far as I remember, it's the only album they did in the 2010s. Uh, and I enjoy listening to it, so that's why I picked this one for 
uh, the other challenge of the 2010s i decided to include the 2020s as well although we're only three years into that decade uh so first dying of everything by obituary it's obituary it sounds like obituary and that's good so there you go and uh as you may have noticed, there's no Iron Maiden on this list. Uh, that's my favorite band. And I would probably just pick Iron Maiden albums pretty much um, exclusively if I hadn't decided to ban Iron Maiden from this video. However, the other 2020s album is Smith & Cudson featuring Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden. This is just super tasty uh hard rock with uh quite of a bluesy edge uh you got cutson and smith they share the vocal duties and adrian smith actually has a, a fantastic uh, very bluesy singing voice this is probably uh outside of anything by azdc because that's my second favorite band this is probably one of my favorite hard rock albums so there you go one album per decade per challenge um i am actually not gonna nominate or challenge any uh, anybody to do this uh i will just say uh if you want to take part in the fun please go ahead if you don't want to that's fine too and i'm just gonna finish off this video by out hipstering merciful metal he always drinks hipster beverages this here is um mimazaka Bancha tea from Japan, a very rare Japanese tea. So cheers, all you hipsters out there. And thanks for watching.